guys. Uh, it's, it's amazing speaking to you all. I can see the comments in the chat and this is very interesting. So I can see, hey, how do I optimize payments on my dashboard? How do I make the best use of my, how do I achieve my sales goals, right? Quite a number of things there. So uh, in this section, I'm going to walk you through the dashboard, right? I'll try as much as possible to capture some of the products or services available on the dashboard, which speaks to your business, right? Which you can leverage on to ensure you make more sales, sales, which you can also make use of when it comes to receiving payments from your customers, right? So I'm going to quickly share my screen, all right? And, and then we can jump into it. Awesome. Just give me all a right. minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Right. Just ensuring the right tab is open. Yeah, this is it. Awesome. So these are so if you're looking at my screen now, yeah, I can see it pop up. Now I'm currently logged into my Floodwave dashboard. Right. So I'm going to uh center my discussion for today to two things, right? Uh, I'm going to talk about business, meaning some of the products we have available which will help you drive your business, that's one. And then I'm going to talk about security. So what are the features available on the Floodwave dashboard today that can help safeguard your, your funds and ensure there's nothing, nothing like account takeover on your account? Right, so I'm going to center my discussion for today for just for those two things. I barely have 20 minutes to cover all that, but yeah, let's 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 get this going. Right, so as an as an SME and of course uh, as a startup, or you, you could even be an enterprise merchant, right? Who would want to receive payments from Floodwave? Right, you you leverage on a payment system or payment infrastructure, right? And some of the products you have pr probably uh, talk, uh, worked with. Right, or you, you're probably going to discover on this call would include things called uh, items like our invoices, our payment links, our fixed virtual account service, right? Uh, and I'm going to talk you through each of them, right, and explain how we can make make use of that. I'm going to also briefly touch on stores, right? Uh, but I believe Dami would want to do more of the talk around stores, especially when it comes to a bit of the work. So I'm not just going to jump into that a lot. So let's 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 start with payment links. What exactly are payment links? Right. So payment links are really a, a, a no-code environment for you to receive funds from your customers. You may have a cost, you, you may have customers on Instagram, on WhatsApp, on Facebook, right? Who, who, who you want to pay you right, for a particular service, right, or you, you would just want to embed, embed a payment link on your Instagram profile, right, you already have a list of items. Or so on WhatsApp today, you can put your catalogs, right, you, you have a list of items on your WhatsApp, and you just want to have a, a payment link also embedded, right, so once they look at, once, once they review what they want to pay, and when it's time for payment, they click on the link and it completes a payment to you, right, so a payment link helps you solve that problem. It prevents you from writing any line of code. You don't need to be a tech-savvy individual. You don't even need to know how to, <laughs> to, to even understand what a code looks like, no, right? So everything is done directly from the dashboard. You can create the payment link and you can share those payment links. So we're just going to quickly create one uh, and I'm going to explain the types of payment link that may, that may work for you. Right. So on the dashboard, what we did was we logged in, right? We navigated to payments list of all the features we have on that payment exist here. We went to payment links and, and we tried to create a new payment link. You can see I have quite a number of payment links listed already, right? Uh, I, I have a lot of businesses, right? So you have a lot of payment links here. So we can quickly try to create one on this call. So we have a single charge payment link, a subscription link and a donation link. So a single charge payment link is really for uh, for customers who would want to pay you once, right? So you don't need the payment to be recurring. A subscription payment link, on the other hand, is for when you want that payment to be recurring. So I've paid you once, but however, you will print the subscription package and you want that payment to, re to, to be reprocessed every maybe every month or every week or depending on whatever, whatever frequency you've configured. So that payment will be recurring for the duration you've specified, right? So that, that's a recurring payment link or subscription link. And why is that important? You may have like a subscription package, right? Let's say you 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 drop 
uh, do it yourself uh, information on your portal. Like for instance, you provide information to your customers around how they can handle specific activities in their homes, right? And you want your customers to be able to subscribe to that package, right? So this, do a one-time subscription a month and you want that subscription to be renewed every month, right? So you can use a subscription link for that, right? Donations link. So you may find yourself in a situation where you'd want to uh, crowdfund for a particular use case, right? So the donation link allows you to achieve that. So we'll go into that, uh, but let's quickly, because of time, let's create, uh, let's quickly just create this which I should be link and see how that works. So I'm going to create this, uh, call this the product workshop. Please, and I, I, I will describe it as, uh, Right. So I'll leave the amounts blank. And this is because I want my customers to be able to pay me, uh, impute whatever amount they want. Right. So this, so think about this as imagine you, you're on Instagram, you have quite a number of items. Your prices are already listed there, right? And you, your customers have already made selections. They know they want to buy three items and the three of them are worth 50,000. You don't know if you're, you're, you're not sure if your, your customers might want to pay you for just one item or they might want to pay you for 50 items. However, right. So the goal here is if you leave this blank, it allows for the merchant to put in that amount and complete that payment. So I'm just going to leave this blank, right? So, uh, any customer can pay with any amount. Additional information. So you can choose to customize what name should follow your, your payment link. So in this case, I can say I just want wisdom, uh, just wisdom. Uh, let's say, yeah. So let's leave it at that. All right. So um, I can put my currency. Uh, what currency do you want to accept here? Uh, let's leave this. Um, I just want any currency. Right. Do you want a redirect payment? Meaning, do you want after payments, we should take the customers back to a particular page? It could be you you want the customer, once they're done with the payment link, it still takes them back to your WhatsApp. No, it still takes them back to your Instagram page. So you can specify that Instagram page here. Yeah? So once payment is completed, it gets it takes them back to that page so they can explore and see other products. So that's possible. Right. Do you want to be able to split payments? And it could be in a situation where this is interesting because you 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 may be listing items on your Instagram and you your some of those items listed on your Instagram or on your WhatsApp are not yours alone. Maybe you you get some of these items from a third party vendor and they require a share, right? So this split payment uh, option allows you to be able to specify what sub sort of accounts to to impute. And I'll, I'll walk you through what that's what sub sort of account is. It's really a configuration you can achieve on the dashboard to allow what percentage of your of your payment should go to a third party vendor right so but for for now let's let's keep this i will walk you through that or maybe a later section but yeah it's it's an interesting feature collect additional information you can choose to collect maybe the date of birth if you want address if you want all that information whichever additional information you want to collect from your customers all right so at, at this point you can also impute an image, right? An image for, for your payment link. I don't want to add an image now. You can explore that to yourself. I'm just going to create a payment link to show you how that looks like. Now we have a product workshop fees, right? This is my payment link. Let's go into this and, and see how it looks like. So at the moment, I don't have an, an image. You can add that if you want. There are no, tran no transactions on this payment link yet. I have the payment link, right? I have. I can edit this link if I want. I can carry out some, I can deactivate, I can delete the link if I want. However, the link is ready. So all I have to do is take this link and share this link wherever I want to share the link, on my WhatsApp status, on my Instagram profile, on, uh, on Twitter, wherever you want to share this link. So this link would look, uh, once you launch, once that link is launched, let me preview this. Give me a minute. Let me be sure you're looking at. Can you confirm? Can you see the payment link screen now? Yes, yes. Okay. Just need to click on the tab. Yeah, okay. Okay, awesome. So now we just launched the payment link. Right. So your customers can add any of this information. Let's say you wanted to pay 100 naira, 
uh, they put in their details, right? Uh, for number, let me use my personal email. So, right. So, um, yeah. So, and then you click on pay. Now, this is, these are your customers attempting to pay you at this point. All right. So, it opens up the payment link. They can pay you across different payment methods, right? Which we support today, which you can enable on your dashboard. So you can see you have card, Google Pay. This was opened on the Safari browser. You'd see Apple Pay, quite a number of payment methods which exist, right? So all they have to do is complete this payment and this payment will be reflected on your dashboard, right? So uh, for bank transfer, which is also, which is the second biggest payment method in Nigeria, uh, it, of course, this is just a transfer. So in case your customers don't want to uh, supply any of their banking information, like maybe card or whatnot, they can easily just do a transfer to you too. Right, so uh, to save time, I'm not going to attempt to transfer this. Uh, I'm just going to show you how this uh, is captured on your dashboard. Okay. So going back to the dashboard, let's see, I have a sample payment link, which uh, I've completed quite a number of transactions on that payment link. And we're just going to see how it looks like. Can you see my payment link with the two transactions? Awesome, great. Yeah. So you can see your transactions, you can download your transactions, you can filter them out. So this, this helps really, especially when you want to receive payments online, right? On WhatsApp, on Instagram, you can do all that, right? I'm just going to show you, uh, so you can feel free to explore the other types of uh, payment links that exist, subscription links, donations, and whatnot, right? I'm, I'm going to quickly just run to a second service, which I want you all to look at, a fixed virtual account solution. Now, Imagine you have a store and you want to be able to publish some an account number right at your store. Like you have a physical store, for instance. You have customers who walk into your stores. Aside from receiving payments online, you also it, it doesn't even have to be a physical store. Imagine you just want to have a static account, a single account number that doesn't change, right? On your store, physical store on your website, or you even want to publish that account number on, on Instagram, on WhatsApp, wherever it is, right? You just want an account. So a fixed virtual account solution allows you to create that account on the dashboard and download flyers, which you can publish wherever you want, right? So uh, once you click on new uh, fixed virtual accounts, of course it ties this to your BVN, but you can put in the name of the account and create that account. Right. So once you create that account, it looks like this. You have an account number, the bank. Every transaction to this account is reflected on the transaction page, like just at the right. And your cost, you can literally see real-time confirmation of transactions that come into this account. You can download your custom flyers, which will look like this. You can download this flyer, or you can choose to change the image of this flyer if you want. Right. And you can share this image or this flyer wherever you want, like Instagram, WhatsApp, on your uh, pasted on your counter. So when your physical customers walk into your shop, they're able to see the account number and they're able to pay you. Right. This is very interesting because if you imagine you wanted to have an account number for separate entities, let's say you have you have an account number for. Uh, for you sell airs and you sell shoes, you sell different items. So you, you'd want to have an account number for each of those items. So you can create a dedicated account number for each of them and share them wherever you want, right? So this gives you a one payment method, right? account number, which doesn't change. So your customers can keep track of that account numbers. They can use it to pay you whenever they want, right? So uh, it's just an easy way of receiving payments from your customers, right? Quickly running into invoices. Now, imagine if you imagine if you offer a service to someone. Maybe you're you offer you have a you have bakery services or you you're a vendor. You supply items to to customers or your clients, and they pay you at a later date. Imagine if you wanted like uh, some form of automated professional way of invoicing them, and you want them to be able to pay you through that invoice. An invoice solution would solve for that use case, right? So an invoice solution allows you to create an invoice, right? Create an invoice which would capture 
uh, let's 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 even try to run through a quick invoice, right? Create an invoice which would capture the details of that service. What's the service you offer? What's the amount of that service? What's the quantity, right? You capture, is there a discount? Is there VAT? Like, uh, what, what are the additional fees? So you can capture all that, right? And then send this invoice to the customer. We deliver this invoice via email. We can also deliver this invoice via WhatsApp, right? So once that comes to you, the customer would see the invoice uh, in this manner. Let me open this up, right? So you would see um, a professional invoice capturing the name of your business. What's, what are the items being paid for? What's the total amount, right? And this invoice has already been paid, right? So it's a paid invoice. So you can keep track of invoices that are being paid on your dashboard. But if this invoice was still open, the customer would see pay, yeah. So you click pay, it takes you to a checkout page where a list of those payment methods are listed. And the customer can also, the clients can also complete payments to you, right? So it's a, it's a professional way of ensuring you deliver those invoices to your customers or to your clients without having to manually type out text messages to say, hey, you're owing me for shoes, clothes, accessories, and all that, right? As an FOB merchant, you've been able to achieve your sales goals, you've collected payment, there are funds in your accounts, right? And now you want to be sure your account is safe. You don't have issues. You don't want to hear tomorrow, hey, your funds are missing or someone was able to transfer funds from your account uh, and whatnot, right? So a settings function gives you control over what happens on your account, right? If you come to, if you go to settings, your business preference, security, it can enable two-factor authentication for login, which means an OTP will always be sent to you whenever you try to log into your account. And this ensures we were able to confirm that you're actually the one logging into your account, right? So it's easy. Enable two-factor authentication by just clicking on the button. Once that's enabled, for you to disable this, you would need an OTP for you to disable. So nobody can disable your two-factor authentication except you, right? How do you want the OTP to be delivered? Do you want it to be sent via email only? Do you want phone number? Do you want phone number only? Do you want both? Do you want to use the Google Authenticator app? Yeah, the choice is really within your control. You can pick all that. And while you're at it, you've already enabled two-factor for login. Why not enable two-factor for transfers, right? This ensures all your transfers from your FloodWave account are safe and we verify you're actually the one transferring, right? And then if you want to do, uh, if you're someone who's API conscious, you, you do transfers via APIs, or you don't, or maybe you don't even understand what an API is. For transfer preferences, select what preference works for you, right? Do you want transfers to be via APIs alone or for dashboard? Like for me, yes, I know I'm the product manager, but sometimes I feel my dashboard is just too awesome for me to go to API. So I prefer a dashboard. So I'll go to dashboard. An OTP has been sent for me to enable. Uh, once that OTP comes in, we just came in. Awesome. So seven, six, eight, zero, three, three. Perfect. So that's been enabled, right? So now I know my account is safe. I know who logs into my account, who can initiate the transfer, and where can the transfer be initiated from? I've done all that. So it's it's me, obviously. I have to confirm all that before it happens. For payment methods, you can easily just go to your payment methods and enable what payment methods you want your customers to pay you with. We have a page which manages all that. So go right ahead, enable all that, right? So that's super easy. And if you're someone who's very, very familiar with APIs, you want to be able to do transfers via APIs, be well aware that you need to whitelist your IP address, right? Before you can do a transfer via APIs, right? So you simply need to come still under settings, whitelisted IP address. You can add an IP, right? Confirm via OTP. And whenever an IP address, uh, whenever a payout is initiated via API, only payouts from that IP address will be honored. And remember, this also writes on what 
transfer preference you've enabled. So you need to ensure you've enabled for API on this page too. So I think we've made valuable time. I'll pause here in case there are quick questions or in case Rotimi wants to ask something big, which I cannot answer. I'm just playing, guys. But I'll just pause here for feedback. All right. Thank you very much, Wisdom. You are right on time. This is very good. Uh, I'm sure that means waiting. Anyway, we already said we're going to take questions at the end of the, 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 the webinar itself. So um, you can just keep sending in your questions. I can already see we have about four questions here already. So um, thank you. Uh, we're going to take your questions at the end of Dami's um, presentation. Hi, guys. Thank you, Rosemi. Thank you, Wisdom, for the fantastic walkthrough. As Rosemi said, my name is Dami, small business growth partner to Flutterwave. I help small businesses understand how they can optimize Flutterwave for their businesses. So today, and I also want to add that this product workshop is a first of many. It's just an overview of what you can use Flutterwave to do for your business. Um, there's going to be many which will specify on the different features of your Flutterwave dashboard. So you should just bear with us for this first um, workshop. We're just going to do an overview, quick hacks, and subsequently we will do specific um, workshops on specific features of Flutterwave. So I'm just going to dive right into it. I think my first thing I want to touch on is onboarding hacks. I can see that Rashida is already saying her dashboard is still not validated. I'm sure you mean verified. And for our verification process, as long as you get everything right, it is an automated system. As long as you get everything right for the system to follow, verification is automatic. You start to have problems when something is missing. For example, like I said, the onboarding hacks, do not take a picture of a picture. You have to take a picture of the exact documents that we are asking for. You have to make sure that all your names are the same on all the documents that we are asking you for. The system rec recognizes a Damlo Labelo throughout your process. So if your BVN is Damlo Labelo, your driver's license has to be Damlo Labelo, um, your CAC has to be Damlo Labelo. That's how that works. I, your IDs must be in color. So the onboarding hack for Flutterwave is everything must be detailed to a T. The pictures must be very clear. Everything must follow the same format. And if that doesn't work, we will definitely get someone to reach out to you to understand why you're having issues and why the system is not letting you get verified. Um, another thing, another important thing for a small business owner to understand with Flutterwave is just in picture you having a free website. I think the mindset of small business owners is that they assume that Flutterwave is like other e-commerce sites for now. Now you are just, this is your personal website because um, paying a website developer can disturb your capital or your working capital or your processes. So it's just a free website and a business management tool. First of all, like Wisdom has shown you, he has shown you payment links, invoicing. He also, he also captures your customer's details. You can send out flash messages, broadcast messages. You can collect payments in 10 different ways from different areas. You can get international payments. That is what your Flutter Wave account is. For those who are using it to integrate into their websites, it is a payment gateway for you. For those who want to sell online, who want an online storefront, it acts as your business's website. We also have something called the Flutterwave Marketplace, and that is what is akin to other e-commerce sites that is being worked on so that you can get more visibility. But for now, this is acting as your website. I'm seeing so many questions saying, how do I optimize it? How do I make sales? You, you are required to tell your customers that this is my business website. Everybody is thinking about it as a separate thing, as a different thing. If you do not have a website you are integrating Flutter with into, this is your website. So when customers come, like wrote to me, said, this is practical experience. A lot of merchants come back to me and tell me that, um, customers don't want to buy from their store. And that is because you are not stern or firm with them. 
telling them that it is your business policy. This is my business website and you have to buy from here. This is your customers who are telling you that, or they will screenshot from your store and come and say they want to pay via bank transfer. They don't do that on other sites. They don't do that on Amazon. They shop from these other places. So it's up to you to let them know that this is your business's website and you have to shop via store. If you have an issue, we will attend to you. Um, another exciting part of avoiding getting scammed when you use Flutterwave to sell is that over the past couple of months, we've seen a rise in customers sending fake alerts to business owners. And it's just disheartening, it's heartbreaking. You are scamming merchants, people who are trying to make honest money. Once you get them to shop via your Flutterwave store, your payment links, anything that has to do with Flutterwave, you don't have to stress about that. Nobody is sending you a screenshot that, oh, they've sent it and you're like, oh, okay, you get it. On your in your flutter wave wallet you can go to bed you can go and sleep and you're telling them that oh i've not seen it it means i've not seen it so nobody can scam you you know you are at peace you are rest assured you get your settlement another important thing is for businesses it's important to have a very nice crm crm means customer um, response management um if you are selling via social media you have to manually that's if you if you like your business, it's important to have a good CRM process. And if you sell via social media, you have to be collecting your customers' details manually. Some even forget. They don't do it because it's stressful because how many customers' details will I be picking and be putting in an Excel sheet? That's the first step. But your Flutterwave store takes this information automatically. Once anybody has made a purchase, it's automatically... Um, how do I put it? It automatically captures your customer's details. If you can look at the back of this slide here, you can see customers. And with this, you can send broadcast emails. You can send flash images directly from your store or your account, telling them, oh, we have um, a deal. Discount is going on. New products are now in stock. You can tell who is your most recurring customer. You can reach out to them. Oh, thank you for always shopping with us. You have a voucher. That enables and develops a really nice CRM for you. Um, it also captures all your products in one place. You can see the number of products that sold um, or you have sold the price. Once it gets to zero, it automatically shows um, sold out. Yeah, that's, that's for this aspect. Next slide, please. Yes, another important thing is, and that's questions that I've gotten, Okay, all right. Uh, yeah, other status from your dashboard. You always get a mail saying that um, your order has been fulfilled or is canceled or is pending. This will always show on your dashboard. Every information that has to do with your sales is always captured on your dashboard. So while it's even your website, instead of having to go to check back end or something, you just have to open your Flutterwave accounts and you're seeing everything that is happening with your business on your Flutterwave dashboard. Um, next slide, please. Yes, very important part. I love this one so much. A lot of merchants complain about shipping. They always have issues with delivery companies, and that's why we decided to partner with Ship, Go Ship, very fantastic guys, um, to provide shipping for you. So Flutterwave has three shipping options, as we can see here. You can turn off your shipping. Um, your customer can shop. You can reach out to your customer. Their details will always be saved and say, okay, where is your Location, this is how much delivery fee costs, if that's what you want. If that is stressful, but you can do that if you want. Now, the, I'll handle my own shipping aspects. Um, a lot of merchants are really confused by this op option because they don't know what to do. And I'm saying this is the best way to use uh, your handle your own shipping option. If you look to your right, this is um, a lot of merchants have their business or logistics partners already that they are used to, that they have been shipping with for the longest. All you have to do is ask your delivery partner for their rates. You can now region where you are to Lagos, wherever it is you are in Nigeria, like this merchant has done. So she has regions from her pickup to all these places. This is 2-5. When you are checking out, you see all these options. Your customers see these options. It comes out and they simply choose and the checkout, very easy. Another, the last option is using our shipping partners. Very interesting. When 
we use our shipping partners. At checkouts, we bring up options, different options, and options include different delivery companies, different prices to different regions. And it has nothing to do with you. You do not have to ask your customer for a delivery fee. It is already set. They pick the one that they want. Nothing like, oh, it's too expensive. Uh, where are you? Is it that far? All of that. Um, they just simply choose the one that best works for them. The money goes straight to our shipping partners. You don't have to stress about that. Your own money drops into your wallet. And that's that about that. You get a prompt from the shipping partner telling you when they are coming to pick up. They come to pick up and they deliver. You can monitor it from your dashboard when it has been delivered. You can track those others. Um, is, there, is there anything? I feel like, oh, yes. Oh, this part is very interesting for all our merchants. So international payments. I know that a lot of our merchants, the Nigerian e-commerce space is growing really fantastically. There's a lot of international um, transactions being done. And we can open you for international payments. You can receive international payments for your products. We will open you up for that. Um, on the dashboard, if you are playing around your dashboard, you can go to your balances. You will see that there are wallets in different currencies, which means you can receive in those currencies. You can sell and receive in those currencies. Um, this is my best part, selling while sleeping. All of you always put, we are close nine to five, all of that. Once you are staying, like I said before, and firm with your customers that this is your website, you can be sleeping, you can go to the markets and your customers are shopping. Always add that in your business policies. Just buy directly from our website. Um, SEO advantage. For those who don't know, SEO means search engine optimization. It means when you go to Google and I search, I want to buy a mouse. What Flutterwave has done is we've done activities um, to make sure that when I search for a mouse, it is a flutter wave store that comes up. So when people go to Google and search for these things, our merchant stores are what comes up. As long as you are selling those things, your business name probably has that item or that item is uploaded on your store. It is your flutter wave store that will come up. Um, we have something called Trade Fair that we've, we started in well, yes, it's 2023. We started in 2021. We've had three. So far, I believe it's free for all our merchants. Fantastic. Our merchants make a lot of sales. The last one, I think we recorded 20 million sales. It's good for you and it's free. The only catch is you have to sell with your Flutter Wave store. Or oh, that's all we're asking of you. Make sure that all your transactions are driven through your store and you qualify automatically to be an exhibitor at the trade fair. Um, exciting things that are coming. We know, we understand your pain points especially me. Um, we have WhatsApp commerce coming soon. Your customers will be able to buy from your store via WhatsApp. Very easy. For those who are stressed, you can just tell them, okay, you can now shop from WhatsApp. And you can now pay for your online ads from your dashboard. Very interesting because I know that right now in Nigeria, paying for online ads for Instagram, Facebook is a pain in the foot. Another thing that is in here is capital. Again, before any organization can loan you money, give you credits, you must build a credit score. And we've made it very easy for you. Your credit score is just going to be how many transactions and sales you make via your Flutter Wave store. If you have 60, the, your dashboard automatically shows you what amount you are elig eligible for when you pay back and they just deduct it from your wallet. You don't have to go anywhere to do too many things. And I'm very happy we're here to take all your questions. I love answering questions. So yeah. Uh, all right. So I can already see. So thank you very much, Dami. Thank you so much for, you know, of course, you know, sticking to time. And uh, it's time to take questions. So we told everyone earlier that if you have questions, put them in the Q&A um, section of, of, of Zoom. Uh, and yeah, we're going to look at them. I can see that Wisdom has answered a few questions already. Uh, so I'm going to, I can see I'm going to answer one question. Should I just read it out, Wisdom? The one about fixed virtual account number and existing virtual account numbers. Okay, all right, so this is the question. What's the difference between a fixed virtual account number and the existing virtual account numbers available on my dashboard balance for top up? 
Okay, so that's actually a very good question. Uh, so the one for top up actually is for you as a merchant who would want to top up your balances because you want to do payouts and whatnot, right? So that's that's really for you to use. Uh, the one for uh, the one for fixed virtual accounts, which I just demoed, is really gives you two things, right? Gives you the ability to specify what name you want to appear on that account number. Yes, we would append your business name to it, but it gives you that ability to append, uh, specify the name on the account, right? It also allows you to create multiple accounts, right? It's not just one, you can create multiple accounts. So which allows you to publish those accounts at different points, right? Let's say you want a dedicated account for shoe payment, dedicated account, or maybe you're a school, dedicated accounts for school fees, for dedicated accounts for PTA bills, like multiple accounts. So that, those are the, like the two clear differences, right? The, the, the one on top of really just helps you because you know it's your account, you can fund it, but the other one helps you specify the names which would give contextual information to whichever customer that would want to pay you, right? So that's, that's, those are, that's the clear difference there. Okay, thank you very much, Wisdom. So uh, this is answered. Next is, is there, is there a way to have more than one webbook? Thanks for your time. That's from Andrew and from Moshi. Okay, so more than one webbook. Uh, I would I would love to get more context into that. Uh, can is it possible? Let me. All right, so maybe Andrew can you know, chat. Just tell us if you have. Um, we can add more context where we'll read up. Where I'm going to bring up other other questions. So yeah, here so I have. Okay, so maybe I'll just speak towards web. In, in case I answer your question, you can just say, "Yeah, that's fine," right? So really, a webbook service, right, uh, allows us to send notifications to a specified URL, right? So if you're asking if you can have more than one webbook URL, no, at the moment, you, you can only specify one webbook URL. All events will be sent there. And we ensure for every event that happens on your account, we send one webbook. So we only we try webbook notifications if your URL is unreachable and you've specified that you want, you want us to retry, right? So we, we can... We try that uh, that way work at a subsequent date to ensure that, or at a subsequent time to ensure that we deliver that notification to you because we know quite a number of merchants rely on that notification for either giving value to their customers or, uh, or updating their own system, right? So I, I hope this answers your question. If not, please provide more context and we can come back to this. Okay, thank you. I have a lot of questions actually, you have to run. Uh, anonymous attendee, again. Okay. Can service-based businesses also use the Flutter website as their website? I love um, this question so much, so much. Um, a lot of merchants don't know that you can package your service business as a product, like how retailers do. For example, cleaning companies. Let me use cleaning companies as an example. You have to be very detailed. You can go um, very left if you are not properly detailed. But let's just say you can narrow it down to one bedrooms, two bedrooms, three bedrooms, and say one bedroom, this is how much it costs. One bedroom with window deep cleaning, this is how much it costs. So package your services as a product, and then you can use FlutterWave as your website. All right, thank you, Dami. Uh, so let me just go to the next one. Uh, I think this is for you, Wisdom. What are the reasons why a merchant would not be able to withdraw his funds after activating API and dashboard. Um, I think this is, you know, um, payouts via API and dashboard. What are the reasons why someone wouldn't be able to actually withdraw funds even after activating this? Okay, so, um, well, so once you're, if you've completed onboarding, your account is live, you should be able to withdraw your funds once the settings has been configured. The only, the only reason I can think of would be maybe the, the compliance checks. Maybe there's a review on your account. And maybe someone on our team is trying or requires some additional information from you. It could be as a result of suspicion, suspicious transactions. But in such cases, you're not just going to be left in the dark, right? An email will be sent to you. We call that for request for information. To, uh, clearly expressing what they would want to receive from you. but uh, And that would be like the only reason I can think of. Uh, for why you're unable to transfer funds from your account. But once you have all your settings and your onboarding is done, you, you should not have a problem at all. But if, okay. If you have okay specific, sorry, go 
Yeah, again, if you have specifics, maybe because this sounds like a very personal question. If you have specifics, please share. And you can also share, share, share your account ID to i at and we will definitely respond to you. Okay, so I'm going to the next one. Uh, Adama, I think this is for you. So can you elaborate more on the WhatsApp commerce? Um, just, just take it that your customers will be able to buy via WhatsApp soon. We, it will be done in another product workshop. We want it to be live first so that you can play around it, but we want it to be live first. It's just your customers can now buy directly from WhatsApp. There's like a bot, he answers on your behalf and they just buy what they need to buy. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So next is, um, maybe this is for you, I think any of you can actually answer this. At the point of onboarding, my business wasn't registered, but now it is. Okay. Not to change anything. Um, yeah, so that's an account upgrade. Um, you can just send email to hiaflutterwavego.com or you can send pages by dummy ADM on Instagram so that we can just put that out for you. Okay, thanks. Thanks, dummy. Um, I have a question here. So why do you keep flagging accounts without notice? And this only happens when segment is when time is about and you don't allow someone to withdraw the money. This sounds more like an accusation. Uh, <laughs> please don't maybe you help us here. I, okay, so that's a, that's a very interesting question. Why do you keep uh, flagging account without notice? Okay, so like I said earlier, right? Um, we only flag an account, right? If there are additional information required and usually an email is sent, right? But aside from that, uh, if, if there's a settlement which is flagged for some reason, there's always like a message which specifies why that settlement is flagged on your dashboard. You would see the status of that particular settlement. And usually that, that might be as a result of uh, maybe the settlement amount uh, is too low and you, you would see it there or the account itself has, uh, has been flagged by the RFI process, which an email has also been sent. But regardless of that, that visibility is, is also provided. And it also sounds like a very personal question too. So if you can share more context, what was your reason? Uh, at what, what stage are you on at the moment? And let's see if we can investigate that and get you more answers. Okay, so, uh, all right. So maybe we need to stop taking, I think if you've not asked a question now, I think you should just stop because we have like about 11 questions to go through now. Uh, all right, so next question here is from Abdul Razak. Please, can I make a payment to AliExpress and other international online stores? No, not yet. All right. Thank you, Dami. Uh, so it's from an anonymous person. I got an email concerning KYC, and I think they need my CAC document and business account. I want to ask if it must be a physical picture of the CAC document, because... I have the digital certificate sent by the corporation. The digital one is accepted. You just have to upload it. There's an upload button. You can just upload that file. That works as well. Okay, fantastic. All right, so Allah Mide is saying that if I am using Flutter with a payment gateway connected to my e-commerce website, not a Flutter store, can I also leverage the shipping service? Wisdom. So, so actually, that's that's a no. So the shipping service is tied to Floodwave Store. If you're you're leveraging us for payments, right, uh, and that's we really don't have these into what's being paid for on your website, aside from the amount or, or specific information you send to us for processing payments. So at the moment, no, you 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 can leverage on that. But it sounds like a good one. Right, so maybe it's something you can share that feedback with us at iadfloodwithgo.com. We'll take that in and we can add that to our roadmap maybe for the future, yeah. But I, I think that's that sounds like a good one. Okay, good. Thank you very much, Wisdom. Uh, I'll let me be here again. Can speed payments be scheduled and can speed payments be paid in installments? Okay, so, so that's for me. So split payments... Yes. Um, so split payments, uh, so your understanding of split payments is a bit different from what it is. Uh, so what we can do is I'll share, I'll share a support document on split payments, right, in the chat, right? Feel free to explore that. 
uh, and we can as well jump into split payment maybe during our next product workshop so we don't take uh, a bit of time here. Oh, okay. okay, all right. So yeah, maybe we should you know consider split payments for some accounts, split payments, and you know all that. Uh, all right. Thank you, Wisdom. Uh, Omola Bakke Raji said, as regards shipping, I have products that can be delivered via bikes and others via cars. How do I make that distinction? Okay, so it depends on the method you choose, right? If you are choosing to handle your own shipping, like I said, you can curate any kind. You can segment it into region um, with, you can say car delivery and you can do bike delivery. If you are using um, flutter wave shipping partners, we have vans. Um, those options come up for the customers. There's van option, there's bike. It's just for you to choose. Yeah. Okay. All right. So just to add to what Damia said, when you are putting products on, when you're uploading products on your store, there's a place for weight, right? And you know, the weight also determines um the the price and you know what it's going to cost the customer so please always make sure you put the correct fit of your product all right uh, so thank you very much Dami. next is from somewhere luckily i noticed that when you set up for first time you generate an adrian bank account for you how about if i'm signing up from another country will they generate the country's bank account for you too uh, yeah, so I'll take that. So at the moment, uh, we we are able to generate account numbers for Nigeria, for uh, Euro, that's UR, that's, and also for U USD and GBP, right? But for other regions, not yet. Uh, it's in the pipeline. So for countries like Ghana, Kenya, that supports mobile money, where we're going to be able to support funding your balance via mobile money too, right? But at the moment, the currencies that are supported for virtual accounts, is USD, GBP, EUR, uh, yeah, USD, GBP, and EUR. That's correct. And NGN, sorry, I skipped that. Oh, just... uh, so I have um, existed questions in, in the chat box. I think I can see something, sorry, in the Q&A box, I can see something in the chat box. Uh, Elizabeth Coca said, I noticed the fixed virtual account carries both my name and my business name. Is it possible to just have my business name only? So hi, um, good question. Uh, and that's intentional really, right? So we, we append because you, the KY, and that's really for compliance and regulatory reasons. We, you're at point of onboarding, we verified you as an individual, right? And that's, that's because you're awarded as an individual merchant. So the details we have are your individual details. So you can specify what you want to name that account and it to be appended to your individual name. So that way, once uh, for audit purposes, right, we 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 are still uh, in the right in the right frame, right? Because we can verify that yeah, your name was verified. This is the BVN information on this individual. This was appended because of the business nature of the account, and that would make sense. That would fly. Well, creating an account in in a name that is not verified. We, we completely flag CBN's policies, right? So that's the reason why that's appended. I hope that makes sense. Okay, thank you, uh, Wisdom. Let me just ask one, here are just more questions very quickly. Any have a hard stop? Um, is it possible to have more than one account? I have a service-based business. That's from Rashida. I think I can answer that myself. Yes, you can have more than one um, account on the FutterWave account. Right, so you can, yes, sub accounts. You can have that on your, not just some accounts, but you can also create another account um, on your Flutter Wave dashboard. You can just go to the left panel of your dashboard and go to the bottom. You see, create another account. Um, that's that. Then from I think it's for you, Dami, From John, John said, "Can I add a tracking link if I'm, if I'm handling my shipping, and can I link my Flutter Wave store to my Facebook page?" Um, you might just have to wait till the person creates. Um, makes an order is it is successful all your customers details are there you can just send the tracking link via email that's part of your crm as well there's no integration to do that via store like you can it just sends to the person except if you are using our partners it's automatic if you are using our shipping partners 
Yeah, you can link your Flutter Wave story to your Facebook page, not link yeah. in the sense of API, but you can just put the link to your Flutter Wave store there. All right. So, um, and finally, thank you all for joining today. Um, it's been uh, an amazing one. We've tried to answer all the questions that we could answer. All right. Uh, we're going to have this this webinar on on YouTube. So you know, look out for this in, in, in a few days. We're going to have this on YouTube where people can can watch. But it can be said. I skipped your question. Uh, sorry. Please, do you have any? Okay, sorry. I think that was for you. Please, do you have any restrictions as regards putting up supplements? up for sale on one store um so if you go to your dashboard under settings we have a prohibited list you can just check through that we have a long okay, list thank you that. okay thank you so so please look out for the video on youtube um in case you missed one thing or you want to just watch it again to have clear understanding um, I Sorry? Yes, yeah, so yeah, one thing before we go, just one last thing. Um, okay. if you go to our YouTube, we have a product scope. It helps with every other thing on the dashboard to properly help you understand what is going on there. It's a video, it just walks you through the dashboard. You can go over it over and over and over again. So just search Flutter with um Flutter with product school and that should come up. Thank you. All right, so thank you everyone for joining today. Um Please be on the lookout for the, for the video on YouTube. And yes, we're going to send you an email um, to learn more from you, to understand what you'd like for us to improve for the, on, on this workshop. I think for, it's going to be a monthly thing now. So please you want to learn more, want to do better, want to make sure we're providing real value for you. So please be on the lookout for the email and please fill the, the survey form. All right. Uh, thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Thank you very much, our speakers, Dami, Wisdom. Thank you so much. Um, and, and hopefully, I will call you again. You can answer. Of course, you can answer. <laughs> All right. So, bye, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your day.